e-STEM or electrotherapy basics, vocabulary, and the four frequencies. Okay, today I'm going to talk about electrotherapy a little bit more and pads and pad placements. So this is the uh, electrotherapy button I just pushed. These are all the choices that this Chattanooga offers. Right now I'm going to be talking about the high volt. The high volt machine um, it comes with a readout screen right here. The first button up here that you could push if you didn't know what the waveform high volt was is a description button. In my classes I don't let them go near that button because they should know from class. Electrode placement shows some different ways to set the electrodes up. But as with always on the Chattanooga, I try to get right away to the edit screen. The settings you're going to be using in high volt is the active pad needs to be set to the negative or the cathode because of Pfluger's law. The better action potential, the better the contraction on the active pad. Now this, this negativity here, the question is, which of these two um, leads is the active pad. So right now, if you sc scroll down here, you can see I have the uh, channel one is the black cord. And on the tip of the black cord in this Chattanooga, I have a red and a black lead. The red lead on the Chattanooga is the active pad. So this active, this red lead right here is gonna be polarity negative. If I switched it, now it's gonna be polarity positive. So we'll go back to negative. The second thing is uh, I need to set the correct frequency. So let me review the frequencies with you. If you set a frequency from 1 to 10 cycles per second, this is going to be causing a twitch that's going to pulse at, in this case, 10 cycles per second. If you could set it down as low as 1, you'd see only 1 cycle per second. This is the frequency that's used for breaking up myofascial adhesions and is called static tetany. The next frequency is going to be 20 uh, pulses per second or hertz. And so this time the person will pulse even faster. And this one is going to be called the intermittent tetany. And it is good for pumping out edema. It causes a vigorous contraction and it pumps out the edema. The third setting, that set of numbers that we use in our practices, would be the one where we're looking at contractive tetany to strengthen the muscles, to prevent atrophy, and to break up myofascial adhesions like an elbow and a shoulder, not myofascial, sorry, periarticular adhesions in an elbow or a shoulder, like frozen shoulder or hip capsulitis, chronic hip capsulitis. So anywhere between 40 and 70 cycles per second is going to be called the contractive tetany. With contractive tetany, however, you're going to need to set a cycle time. We like to have contractive tetany with a good rest between. So it's like working out. You don't work out till you're very fatigued. You actually work out, take a rest, and come back. So the contractive tetany will be set to a 10 to 50, or if you made that into a ratio, a 1 to 5 ratio. When you want to start your cycle time, you'll have this on your patient. This will be on the trap that you're trying to strengthen. This will be a dispersive pad maybe on the low back or on the thigh and you'll bring up the intensity, you'll bring up intensity first, and you'll see the intensity going up, and then you'll hit the start button. As soon as you hit the start button, then the timer will start, but also the cycle time will go on and off. So if I just leave this at 10 volts, you'll see in a, about 50 seconds, it'll go down to zero for 10 seconds, and then after that, it'll go back. So there it goes down to zero. And now 10 seconds later, it sh oh, actually, how long will the fatigue? No, I'm wrong. It'll be on for 10 and off for 50 because this is contractive tetany. Again, we don't want to fatigue the muscle. So this is, uh, I'm going to hit stop on that. Um, if I want to do the same thing, but this time I want to have the person have a non-continuous sweep, not meaning it's only at 70, I can actually change this. And I can have it sweep from 80 to 120, from 1 to 120, this particular setting cracks me up because this is the I have no idea what I'm doing, I'll just do any of them, and then the 1 to 10 cycles per second. So this one here is set for myofascial adhesions. Continuous is our, the only option apparently for contracted tetany. Now let me talk about the last frequency setting. It's called fatiguing tetany, and the fatiguing tetany is anywhere from 80 to 120. Now I'm going to show you how I could have set it by using continuous and go right here, and I'm going to bring this up, I like to bring it up to 120, which is its max cycles per second, 
I'll put this on the trap that has a spasm, this on the low back or the thigh. Again, I need to change my cycle time. Ideally, it would be 50 on and 10 off. However, that's pretty hard on people, and so they've actually changed it. Most machines now say 5 to 5 or, ten, or uh, 10 to 10. So 10 to 10 would be good because you're on for 10, and then you let it rest for 10, and then you get back in there really fast. So it's kind of like trying to really make sure that you contract, 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 and you give them a short rest, and then you contract, 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 and you give them a short rest, and you contract, contract, to the point where the, the muscle will just give out, and there won't be a spasm. So if I turn this on right now, you can see if I hit up the intensity, let's put it 15 volts, and you can see that it'll be on for 10 seconds, and then after 10 seconds, this thing will just automatically cycle down to 10 seconds, and it'll keep going through for the full 20 minute treatment. Treatment time for motor nerve stim is generally five to 20 minutes, depending on patient's um, needs. Right there you see the volts have, got, have gone down to 10, or zero rather. Over here, by the way, this ramp is set something that you can either have it come on really quickly or you can slowly bring it on. So people who don't like the motor nerve stim but you know it would be really beneficial to them, sometimes by lengthening the ramp, you can actually have the person feel better. So I can change the ramp so it takes longer or shorter to get to that intensity. Lastly, difference between intensity. Intensity is volts. So let's go ahead and hit unpause again. Um, and intensity is volts. That's how much the person feels the power. It's like the, the, the amount of volume on a stereo. You know, that's a lot of volume. It's very loud. And this would be less volume, less loud. The frequency, however, is how much it will be on during a second. So it will be one beat per second, 10 beats per second, 120 beats per second. Totally different things. So that's a summary of the Hyvolt, and it should be pretty easy to use now. Thanks.